Hi, welcome to the screencast for topic 10 or 15.1. It's also known as option D over medicines and drugs. So this topic has just a ton of information with it. So in my screencast and notes, I'm going to try and point out kind of the highlights and the favorite questions that IP has over this. And then also you'll be getting a practice quiz with um, pretty much every question I can find that they've used. And you'll see that they have very common themes, very common questions they ask about um, each particular subject within here, whether it's an antiviral or an analgesic or uh, stimulant that you're looking at. So records from back in uh, Egypt, Greece, China, back 3,000 years show that we've always had medicine going on. Oftentimes it's been tied in with religion, um, but it really took off in the 20th century when we learned how to develop or make synthetic molecules for specific diseases. And that challenge remains today is being able to find synthetic compounds or natural compounds that will fight different disease processes. Of course, that brings challenges then uh, with the abuse of drugs as well as bacteria and other things developing resistance. And today we face the challenge of possible pandemics, as well as the ongoing issue of which drugs get the research money to be developed and who gets the medicine once it is available. In section one, they talk about a couple of common terms you hear related to medicine. One is the idea of healthy, and healthy is all about balance. When your body has good balance among the thousands of reactions going on every day, that's considered healthy. Your body's equipped with its own line of defenses um, that we'll talk about in a little bit and does a lot of healing on its own, but certainly you can help your body out oftentimes by seeking um, medicines or pharmaceuticals. The placebo effect is something doctors still don't understand well, but it's a measurable and observable improvement in health that's not due to treatment. About one third of all patients in studies who are, think they're on a therapeutic drug will show improvement when in fact they're not taking any medication. And this is especially true of pain reliever. Um, if you give someone a strong, you tell them you're giving them a strong pain reliever, they will get relief. So there certainly is something to a positive attitude and your mind being part of the treatment or your spirituality, wherever you feel that comes from. Medicines work by supplementing the body's natural defense system, and the terms medicine and drugs are often used interchangeably, and there's a very slight difference. All medicines are drugs, but they're beneficial drugs, and a, a drug is any chemical that affects how the body works, and it may be for positive or it may be for negative. It may be considered a legal substance or an illegal substance, but medicine improves your health, so it's not a judgment as to whether the government says it's good for you or not. But a medicine that improves your health is, cons or a drug that improves your health is considered to be a medicine. Therapeutic effect is the measure of the benefits provided by a drug. So that's one of the things that researchers have to get through with the FDA is they have to show there's a measurable therapeutic effect before it's allowed to go on the market. And again, so what are the effects that drugs or medicine have on the body? It can alter the physical state, your consciousness, your activity level, your coordination. It can alter the incoming sensations. It can alter your mood or emotions. And then drugs are classified based on which of these three areas they affect, or they could affect multiple areas, of course. So some drugs target the nervous system. Those would be stimulants, depressants, analgesics, those are painkillers, and anesthetics. And then the metabolic process are things like hormones, antacids, and vitamins. And then drugs that supplement the body's response to disease and help fight infection are things like antiseptics, antibiotics, and antivirals. Here's a question I guarantee will be on your IB test. They want to know drug delivery methods. And basically, you could take it orally by mouth. You can breathe it in and inhale it. You could uh, take it through the skin transdermal with a skin patch. You could take it rectal, which is a suppository, or, and you could have eye or ear drops. And then finally, there's three types of injections. It's in the skin, subcutaneous, really deep in the skin and intramuscular, or actually into the blood system, which is intravenous or IV. So how do they decide which delivery method to use? Um, it depends on a few things. 
the nature of the drug, will it break down in the digestive system before it gets to where it needs to be, the condition of the patient, can they swallow it. So um, rectal medications generally are used for the very ill or the very young. And then um, the last thing is the most effective delivery system. How quick does it need to get to its targeted site? So some advantages of each, um, oral is very convenient. It does depend on the rate of absorption based on the drug's concentration and what's in your stomach. So you may be told to take it on an empty stomach. Oftentimes though, you are told to take it with something in your stomach so it doesn't cause problems for your stomach. And the primary absorption site then is the small intestine. Rectal is effective when patients are nauseous. When I said when they're very elderly or very young, it affects its effect on the body depends on its rate of absorption, which depends on the drug concentration. And it depends some degree on the stomach content, believe it or not, because it's going to be absorbed through the blood system, but it's also um, in the area of your digestive system. It's at the very end of your digestive system. Inhalation has a rapid absorption rate. And it produces systemic effects, meaning the brain, brain and the whole body are going to feel it. Because when you breathe it in through your lungs, then it gets transported to your blood system rather quickly. Parenteal is an injection. And again, it can be into the skin or subcutaneously. It's going to be quicker than taking an oral medication. Um, but it's going to be slower than if it was through an IV. But this is what's used for insulin. Um, if you know anybody who's been on blood thinner, dental injections, and of course, illegal drugs are often injected too. You can do it into the muscle. There's no immediate response, so it's used for large doses or vaccinations, things that can get absorbed into the blood system over time. And then into the bloodstream is when you want it very quickly. So the response is almost immediate and precise amounts can be administered. But again, it's going to go to the entire body. You're not going to be able to target it to just one area if you put it into the bloodstream. Physiological effects, again, the therapeutic effect is um, any effect it produces on the body. It's going to have um, both intended and unintended therapeutic effects, which are going to be positive benefits. So oftentimes a drug is developed for one use and found out it also has positive uses for something else. Those are therapeutic effects. Side effects are unintended effects. So the therapeutic effect is an intended beneficial one. A side effect is an unintended one, and they can vary greatly from person. Really common ones are dizziness, drowsiness, nausea, but they can be severe to fatal. They can do organ damage. They could cause birth defects. So depending upon what the drug is and what you're taking it for, you'll need to decide as a patient if it's worth the risk or not of the side effects. The dosing regime is the amount and frequency of the drug described or prescribed. It depends on a lot of things, age, weight, sex, diet, and even the environment. Um, you need to be aware of other interactions with other drugs, which is where pharmacists come in. And ideally, you would keep your dosage at a constant level in the blood. But the reality is you can only do this with an IV drip. But slow-release tablets, multiple doses, like taking a small amount every day or a couple times a day helps. But since constant dosage isn't possible, then what you try and do is stay within what's called a therapeutic window. You don't want the level in your um, blood system to spike and drop throughout the day. You try and keep it at a nice constant level. And this is especially true like with insulin, and that's why insulin pumps are so handy now. They can keep a constant, small, steady stream um, going within the body. Tolerance. Um, and addiction or dependence, tolerance occurs when you have an increasing dosage that's needed to get your desired effect. And it tends to lead to overdose because eventually your effective dose is going to exceed the lethal dose. So um, that's when ODs occur. Addiction and dependence is different from tolerance. It means the patient needs the drug to feel normal. Tolerance is when you need more and more of the drug. So often they go hand in hand, but they are two different issues. Research and development, often referred to as R&D, we're always going to need it because we're always going to be looking for more effective drugs. There's always going to be new diseases emerging. And of course, there's a lot of politics that go into who gets the research money. And the bottom line is it the money goes toward drugs that a lot of people are going to need or um, 
people are willing to pay for. Obesity, huge market for diet pills. Um, but little money goes toward diseases with a small market. So tropical diseases, which are mostly in developing countries. Um, diseases that mostly strike just poverty-ridden countries. Um, sad to say, not much research money goes toward that. The average time to reach a shelf is 10 to 12 years, and it does literally cost hundreds of millions of dollars, but the return is quite good, obviously, because um, pharmaceutical companies are doing well. And then research, the phases of research and development, this isn't a real big deal, but um, if you're curious, first they have to identify a lead compound, not lead, but a lead compound, and then they make tests of many similar chemicals called analogs, Eventually, they go on to animal testing, and then three phases of human trials. They actually do the human trials with healthy volunteers first, then with patients, and then finally with uh, what's called a blind study, where some get the drug and some have the placebo. And in a true blind study, neither the doctor or patient knows who's whose. And then they also have to do post-marketing safety tracking to make sure there aren't any long-term effects that emerge over time that didn't come out in the trials.